57630. Thirsting for life. Chicago, Illinois, USA. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank thee because that thou has permitted us to live in this day to see these great signs and wonders happening by your hand. And there is no one here any more conscious than it is in your servant who knows these things than I am. It is you, Lord, and by your promise, you promised you do these things, and thou always keeps your promise. And to this we are thankful and give thee praise. Bless us this afternoon in the word, tonight in the great healing service. We'll praise thee in Christ's name. Amen. You may be seated. I was just trying to think a few moments ago. Someone adjust the microphone. If you set that just as high as you can. I, anybody ever had the flu? Just putting my little boy Joseph. I think I must have caught his bad cold and got a very bad throat. I've got a preacher's throat. I haven't known the time in 25 years that my throat wasn't comp- constantly red because I preach. Pray for the sick day and night, day in and day out, week in and week out, month, year in, year out, see? And it just keeps me constantly coughing. And so I get a little, it uh, never gets so. I don't believe I ever did have a sore throat. Never did have a throat so It's just overtaxed. And then I get cold in there, of course, and it swells up the larynx. And then it being raw, it gives them the jam a chance to get in. I was something here. Oh, yes, I was reading a letter. I wished I had brought that. I knew I should do something, Rosella. Is uh, she here this afternoon, Rosella Griffin? Yeah. Billy wants to see you and uh, then make that arrangement for you. I was reading a letter just a while ago. And so they, this lady came in. She's here somewhere in this, I guess, that auditorium right here at this church. And the Holy Spirit told her, said, Lady, you got cancer. And she had come in here from somewhere in the West. And she said, when I walked off the platform, I said, she said to her husband, now, that just can't be. said, now, I didn't say nothing when Brother Branham said that. But I just thought, now, wait a minute, I know. And then I said, I told her, said, who she was, where she come from, what had her symptoms and everything. And said, the doctors couldn't find her trouble, but said, you have cancer. And uh, she doubted that. And now I've got the letters. I'll bring them tonight. That's be a good time tonight. And now she's in the hospital just at the point of death with cancer. See? It was there. The doctor couldn't find it, but the Holy Spirit knew it was there. Now, I don't see this, you see, but perhaps if she hadn't have doubted that, that story might have been different today. See? See? If she hadn't have doubted it, you must believe now to me, you don't have to believe me, I'm just a man. But when he says anything, it's a truth. See, it's the truth. And so one time in a meeting, it was in Canada, way up here, and I can never think of that city across from Detroit, Windsor, Ontario. And there was a man slipped into the meeting, and he thought it was a telepathy. And he put on his prayer card, on the back of it, I have so many diseases and things like that, there wasn't nothing wrong with him, and when he came up to the platform, he happened to be in the part of the line, probably just going through praying for the sick. And he said, could you tell me what's wrong with me? And Brother Baxter started passing him on. I said, just a moment. He said, I want to know what's wrong with me. Brother Baxter said, we're not having that. Now, he'd been better off if he'd listened to Brother Baxter. See? Went on through, but no, he had to stop. And when he did, then the Holy Spirit said to him, there's nothing wrong with you. You have no disease at all. He said, oh, yes, I do. He said, look on my card down there that they got. I said, I don't care what you got on your card. You got nothing wrong with you. And he said, oh, yes. I said, well, you don't. He said, I've got it. I said, I got it fitted on my card. I said, I don't know anything about your card. I never seen that. You just get a card, and anything you want to put on it, you put it on it. But I never see that. The ministers get them. And he said, but he said, I said, you must have had it, and maybe you had a faith and was healed. Oh, he said, that's what it is. Is it? Turn around. 
And just then I looked and there was a vision. I said, why has the devil put that in your heart to do that? I said, you are now, if this is a person of that is in this building, I'm not speaking against your church. I said, you're a church of Christ minister. They love to fast. I said, you're a church of Christ preacher. Last night you sat with a man with a gray suit and a red tie and you sat at a table and had a little uh, clean cloth hanging over it and there was a blonde-headed woman sitting next to you. And you said it was telepathy. And you come to this meeting today and wrote that on there thinking you'd pass it through and make a telepathy out of it to trip up God's spirit. I said, you are the one exposed. And just then, the man setting up there, he said, Mr. Branham, I'm the guy that was with him. I said, that's my wife sitting right here. I was with him. And I said, the things that you put your card, you have brought cancer and TB, and he fell on the platform. But the last time, I had him, I never had no more, just a letter from some of the people that he was in a serious condition. So we're not playing church. The infallibility of the Holy Spirit, we, not the infallibility of the man, but the man has no infallibility, but the Holy Spirit is absolutely infallible. Don't pretend nothing. You be what you are. When you say, I now accept Christ as my healer, you mean that, don't you? Just slip around the corner and say, well, I'll try Brother Roberts when he comes in or somebody else. Don't you never do that. That's a dangerous thing, very dangerous. And you be just what you are. And if you're not a Christian, don't say you are. If you're a sinner, admit it. God knows it. And now your sinful condition, just because you belong to church, that won't help you one bit. You might have a confession, your name on the book and live in a righteous life, and you are still a sinner. you got to be born again, not with a mental mind, but by something that's happened in your heart. See, it got to be friends. Don't never let the devil blindfold you to that. I don't come by intellectual conception. It comes by birth, and your life copes right with that. You must have it. I wish to read and just take about 20 or 30 minutes of your time. I'm hoarse, and, but I want an evangelistic service. The, do the Lord given it tonight to pray for the sick. Now, I've chosen for this afternoon for the subject found in Psalms 63 and the first three verses. O God, thou art my God. Early will I seek thee, my soul thirsts for thee, my flesh longeth for thee in a dry and thirsty land where no water is, to see thy power and thy glory as I have seen thee in thy sanctuary. Because thy loving kindness is better than life, my lips shall praise thee. We have the most unusual text this afternoon, the reading of God's Holy Word. When I read this, it just turned me around, and I thought to say within myself, what was the prophet speaking of when he said, Thy loving kindness is better to me than life. There is nothing no better than life. And then, Thy loving kindness is better than life. My lips are praising. Well, I thought there must be a different kind of life. Now, many people begin to think on the subject of life, and now, feeling free, and I... I've always tried to not hold things back. Never in my life, knowingly, have I ever called out a character's name or some individual's name. I have rebuked sin, preached what I thought was right, but never disregarded any brother. He could be just as wrong, and I could be wrong too. But regardless, him being wrong, don't disfellowship him from a fellowship with Christ or with him. We are brothers. But I had a minister last night. It happens to be... In our room, there's a television, and I'm not much on television, as you know. But if the right thing, all right, but there's so little right on it, I just uh, don't have any one in my house. And so it was a famous evangelist that was preaching last night that said, when a man is born, he receives a life, and that life, he will be forever. I thought, a man of that caliber, but I just wondered if he'd ever sat down to think this. The Bible said, the soul that sinneth, it shall die. Yes, sir. Everything that has a beginning has an end. And it's things that has no beginning has had uh, no end. And there's only one eternal life that is in God. All other life has an end, but God has no end because he had no beginning. And we, being part of God, have eternal life with God, but everything that has any other type of life had a beginning. It has an end. Only the eternal things last. Now, the word forever comes in a conjunction, forever and forever. Forever is a space of time, but eternally is no beginning or end. It's just a perfect circle. 
there's no end in it at all. It's eternity, forever. Like you see, forever and conjunction forever. Two spaces of time, but eternity and eternal life means the same thing. See, it's in the same category that it had no begin, is, neither does it have an end. It's forever the same. Ever was and ever will be the same. Now, in Mother Joseph's church, where I feel just as free as I was at my tabernacle and to give a little basis here before I bring my message to you from the Lord, I want to just do a little Bible teaching for a moment. There's a spirit in the world that is real, pure, and adulterated love. And that love comes from the great spirit, it's God. There's a spirit in the world, just pure and adulterated righteousness. That spirit comes from God. And all of the spirits of righteousness, of love, of purity, that is God. That is the eternal, everlasting, without beginning or ending, that God. The Logos that went out of God, as no uh, disregards to Catholic people now, but the Catholic Church, I, my background, my family is Catholic, and I have uh, the Catholic people here, the book called Facts of the, Our Faith, and they use the word of eternal sonship of God. The word don't even make sense to me. The word eternal means eternity, which had no begin or has no end, and son means had a beginning. So how could it be uh, eternal godship, but never an eternal sonship? A son is one that's begotten of. So it had a beginning. So, and the Logos, which was the Son of God, went out, created by these great fountains of purity, God, as those spirits went out and he created the Logos. And it was a body. It was in the form of what we are now, which is called, in the clergy we are speaking, a theophany. It's a body that doesn't have a spirit in it. It's a body that's waiting for you Christians. As soon as the life leaves this, you go into that body. When this earthly tabernacle will be dissolved, you have one already waiting at Theophany. Now when God was in Theophany, which was Christ in the making, then that Theophany became flesh and dwelt among us. Then that was to redeem. He came from there, down through this, to redeem this creature, give it life and take it back up into eternal, see? The eternal one, see? Now, there's only one eternal life, and that lays in God only. And God has eternal life, and we have been privileged to become the sons of God. Then that word, he that heareth my word and believeth in him that sent me hath eternal life. The Greek word Zoe, there used to be for God's own life. The creature that accepts him becomes a part of God and is just as eternal as God is. That's right. There's no reason for us to doubt that. It's God, everlasting, eternal word, and everything that had a beginning has an end. So what? Where did sin begin? Sin began at the Garden of Eden, and sin has an end. So if David cried, Oh, Lord my God, my soul is thirsty for thee in a dry land, where no water is, for the love and kindness is better to me than life, there must be two different types of life. And there is two types of life. And when a man is born in this world, he is nothing but a product of sin when he is born, because he is from sexual desire. He is just a product of sin. The Bible says he is. He is born in sin, kept in iniquity, come to the world speaking lies. And yet, he has got life. But that life is a perverted life. That life was, Satan cannot create life. He can only pervert what God has created. Satan has no way to create. There is only one creator, that's God. Satan couldn't heal. Medicine couldn't heal. There is nothing else can heal but God, because he is the only creator. And anybody that's intelligent would know enough to know that there is not a medicine or a drug or nothing in the world that can create life. God is the only solemn one, can in creation alone. So he said, I am the Lord that healeth all of their diseases. Now we see the different types of life. That's the reason that this man's product, uh, born as a product of Adam, which is a product of sin, from listening to his wife, and the wife was a product of sins, come from Satan. And Adam followed his wife out, a perfect type of Christ, going through this, the bride to take her sins, as Adam took the sins of Eve and left the Garden of Eden, not deceived, but willingly walked out with her. So was Christ not deceived. Satan could not deceive him. If thou be the Son of God, he knew that he was, but he deliberately walked out and took sin for the church. He is our sin bearer. And now everything that come out of that cycle of eternal life, when that life goes back into its cycle again, 
into that ceaseless eternity, not one shape, form of sin in any way will ever enter. Now, here's one Baptist preacher who believes in holiness. Notice that he has got to be cleansed, that person's got to be cleansed, and there is uh, only one thing can cleanse him, that's the blood of Jesus Christ. Nothing else can do it. So I wondered then, when he cried, Oh God, my God, the love and kindness is better to me than life, there must be two different kinds of life then. And I begin to study it. How could it be two different kinds of life? Well, I begin to think that many people think when they are out here on the street running around and to places if they are living the life, that is the thing. I've watched young mothers take their children and teach them tap dancing. Well, I want her to have a little life. I've seen young ladies strip themselves down to just enough clothes the Lord let her put on and go out and she says, I'm living, I'm really living the life. And the woman doesn't know that she's dead while she's alive. Some time ago in another city, I was going to my room and there was a Kiwanis club or some such club. I was having a meeting in this city. I was having a rally, a convention. And when I went in, went up on the elevator, there was two young ladies coming down with just the underneath garment on with a whiskey bottle in their hand, hollering, whoopee! going and letting men dragging them from one room to the other and i sat back in the shadows to watch and when they got close to me also vulgar and they were both women and uh, no doubt married women with their husbands at home maybe thinking they were having a little clean fun there is not such a thing and then they was up there whooping it around kind of relaxing they would call it one of them stopped and said whoopee this is life I said, oh no, that's not life, that's death. The Bible says, she that liveth in pleasure is dead, while she is alive. The Bible said that. And this many times, the devil tries to tell you that that's life, but that's death. And uh, notice also that that life becomes so miserable, till people take that life, take a gun and blow their brains out. There will be many of them in Chicago, perhaps this summer, there will be many of them jump from the towers or drown themselves. There'll be people in Chicago in the next few weeks turn their gas chambers on, kill themselves. There'll be some deliberate drive in the front of automobiles and kill themselves. There'll be some take poisons and suicide in, on every hand. That kind of life becomes so treacherous till we know that the prophet wasn't talking about that kind of life. That's death. That's death in a form of life. That's what Hollywood has done for the United States. It's perverted, it's stripped our women, it's done all kinds of evil things, it's made our men, it's produced things here that's perverted the real stream of life into death. Even our nation is dying. I was speaking a few moments ago with my wife when we were sitting in a little place and there was them women coming in there, each with a cigarette. Some, a little girl sitting there with her eyelashes pulled out, painted like the devil, way back and hooked over sideways and she was standing up poor little thing not no older than about 18 smoking a cigarette and drawing her mouth way out making the awfulest thing just scooting the smoke from her nose not realizing she was dead in trespass and sin you defile this temple god will destroy it that's the trouble today we have got too many weak pulpits that are afraid to preach an eternal burning hell and to warn the people of the things and letting the church go just as slothfully and sloppy as it can be. And I said, honey, where could we start from? Our nation is corrupted. Our politics is as rotten as it can be. Our factories and our economies is just as rotten as it can be. Even the car industry, it takes you six or eight months to get the bugs combed out of your car. It's uh, online, a somewhat line, and throw it together. What difference does it make? Our womanhood is broke, motherhood of America is crushed, the morals is as rotten as in any nation there is in the world. What's the matter? It's because we have loved the things of the world more than they loved God, and they got uh, perverted. Exactly right. Not only that, but our church is, is crushed. Little old pulpit, sissified preachers that stands up in, I ain't criticizing no certain ones, but they stand up, and uh, it's a meal ticket. It's an offering or it's a popular name to get on television or in the air. I wouldn't sell my birthright to Jesus Christ 
for the television and for clarity there is in the world. No, sir. Life means more than these nasty and godly things. I'd rather have favor with Christ than to be a president of the world. What a condition the world got into. Here not long ago, I know of a church in our country, and many of them throughout the country, that they just care for just carefree, and I'm not scolding people, but brother, I've got to answer at the judgment for the messages I've given to the people. God, the only thing he could do, no, nothing could save this nation, it's gone. There cannot be no worldwide revival in this time. There's nothing to build on. It's as rotten as it can be. When it comes to a place that it's vulgar and dirty, a place as Paris, France, which has uh, been the seat of Satan for hundreds of years, women, vulgarity, nastiness, when they who used to get uh, go there 25 years ago and get their design to put on our women, We've got so low till they come over here and get our designs to put on their women. That's right, newspapers and magazines picks it up and the poor people are wading in it. There's only one thing the Holy Spirit's doing, that's salvaging what he can, the elected of God, to pull them out. So, for me, as long as I got breath in my body, I'll call out and condemn the thing. I can't stop it. God said it would be there. I can't stop it, but I'll give a voice against it. That when God plays over his tape recording at the day of judgment, they'll know that they were told the truth anyhow by the word of the living God. And God confirmed it with signs and wonders. Then it be up to them. That's right. Listen, friends, God created a man to thirst. God put thirst in a man. A man was made to thirst. And do you mean to tell me that you can try will try to quench that blessed holy thirst with the world and with the uh, devil's programs. You try to quench that thirst with drinking whiskey that God put in you to thirst after him. There is something in man to thirst. God made that thirst for man to thirst for him. But you try to quench it with pleasure. And this American people has quenched it with pleasure, mud. That's right. The blessed holy thirst, you strip yourself on these beaches, you lay in these pool rooms, playing cards, faithful drinking, all this nonsense that you do and stay home on Wednesday night watching the television instead of going to church. What are you doing? You are trying to quench that holy thirst. You've got to quench it some way. And you reject Christ and the devil pours his swap into you, right? And you think that you're right. But the Bible said, there's a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof is the ways of death. The death is total annihilation. Separation. Don't you never try to quench that blessed thirst with something the devil put into you. Now, not only you say, well, I'm not a drunkard, I'm not a gambler, I'm not a pleasure seeker, but, to brother, if the devil can't get you one way, he will try another. And the devil has tried to quench with his type of life, the thirst that God give you for his life. He just let you join church, he just let you shout, let you speak in tongues, he lets you do all kinds of demonstrations and still get drinking from the devil's swap pens. That's exactly right. When a man thirsts up after God, his whole being is surrendered to God. People go around today and joins churches and lives like the devil. They think they quench that thirst. I go to church, that settles it. Many times I told them when they come on Easter, that's usually when everybody wants to show their new hearts. They'll come on Easter. You might as well bid them a Merry Christmas because you won't see them again till next Easter. And yet, they're members of the church. They're members of that denomination. But a member of the church is born again of the Spirit of God, and their soul cannot live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. That blessed holy thirst that God gives you to thirst after him, then you pervert it, give it something else, that hunger, that thing that you want to do, test out and see what it's thirsting for, see, what it's after. Listen to what David said here. My soul thirsts after thee in a dry land where no water is. Oh, could you imagine being in a dry land where no water is? That sticking a, like a fish out of the water. It will uh, pretty kill him pretty soon. And the real born again saint of God, not just once of a morning when you get up, but all through the day that blessed thirst calls out for God. And you'll smoke a cigarette to question 
quiet on your nerves instead of praying. And a member of the church will take a social board drink and call the Sabbath question to quieten your nerves instead of letting God quieten you love him. You'll go up and throw your arms around some other man, have a little clean fun, have a little date on the side, a little afternoon kiss at the back, get to satisfy that thirst that God put into you to thirst after him, and you'll take another man's wife and run off with her and live in a hotel room with her and carry on like that. I don't say you don't do it. You may be here. If you are, God burn that in your soul. That's right. Thinking you're having a little clean fun. There's an all seeing eye watching you. And the devil is trying to burn your passions after other women as they walk up and down the street half dressed. And you're long looking almost half wrecked at them, little old dirty vaga thinking women out there with them little old dirty clothes on. And you men that will let your wife do that, that shows what you are made of, out of. That shows what kind of a man you are. A man is the head of the family, he's the head of the house. But today, the women is the head of the house, head of the factory, head of the church, and everything else because it's become a conglomeration of sin. And Satan took Eve, and he's still using her. And America is a woman's nation. Not long ago in Germany or Switzerland, some lady said to me, a Christian woman, she said, Brother Branham, I'd like to go over to America. I hear that the ladies are really, well, they have uh, the big sway there. Not in Switzerland, no, sir. Well, we have no. I said, but here's what follows. It causes prostitution. Right here in Chicago, according to your paper, you have 2,000 abortion cases every day. 2,000 abortion cases. That thousands innocent babies die every day because of filth. How can you have a revival under them kind of circumstances? How many prostitutes hit the street last night and men with other women and women with other men and little girls sell their morals and take up and down the street till finally they end up on a skid row down here as I walked through the city last night of Chicago and I looked what was going on. How can you expect the Holy Spirit to sweep a revival over something like that? It's got to have a place to anchor. And they go through the churches out here of a morning and hear a little old uh, certified sermon about something, go back home and think they're Christians and close the church up early. If the pastor preaches more than 20 minutes on the roses or who will be the next president or something like that, they'll fire him and put a new one in. That bunch of hypocrisy, hell-bound, vulgar, pleasure-seeking, the Bible said, said, be high-minded, high minded lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God, truth breakers, false accusers, incontinent and despisers of those that are right. God give us old-time Christianity, bond again experiences, that thirst, is in you, but it's for a purpose. Woman was made for man. Man was not made for woman. Woman was made for man. But a woman was made for a man, not M-A-N, M-A-N, not men, many of them, but singular. That's right. But when they sell their morals, when they scandalize themselves and the men, the same thing, you're perverting the very cause that God made you a woman or a man. Then you call that life, it's a death. Then you go to church and join the church and put your name on the church and become a church member and live like the world. It's perverting the very thing that God intended you to be. That thirst that God put in you to be like him and to love him and thirst after him. The pastors and the churches and yourself, you have robbed yourself from that wonderful blessed thing that God ordained for you to use that thirst, thirsting, thirsting. Oh, if the Pentecostal church would only satisfy thirst in God instead of trying to follow some evangelist or some emotion or some little ism or little sensation, how much better off it would be. You'd follow the Holy Spirit in divine love instead of sensations, the little gifts and things like that. How much better off you'd be God don't want you to run after gifts. He wants you thirst after him. Notice, David said again as being a psalmist, and he was a woodsman. He lived in the woods. He knowed what it meant to be in the woods. He always wrote of the still waters and green pastures and the shady places. He knowed what it was because a shepherd has to find 
those things he has to know where those beautiful places are many times have i been into the desert riding out there just place where i'd have uh, to lead my horse poor thing was so much out of water we couldn't have any to drink or the horse or i we would thirst oh if i could only find a truck somewhere to get back and then when you get back to that state the devil begins to show you mirages you know what a mirage is did you ever go down to the road and look and see the sun shining on the road it looked like a whole lot of water oh it will fool you here not long ago i seen where a bunch of geese coming from canada or ducks and they seen one of those on the road they fell in the road and they all busted open they thought it was a water oh the devil's got a many pitfall for the people it looks like and i've seen people thirsting where they'd run into these places and fall into them look think they was in water looks just like a big running water throw sand upon their head thinking it's water and it's nothing but hot burning sand and the devil's told you little lady and you sister that if you do all these things and you brother if you do all these things and have a little sociable lot of narrow-minded stuff why you don't want to listen to that old crank preacher you don't want that bible that was translated four or five times there's nothing to it you can join church and be a good citizen there's nothing in the world but a mirage the devil showed you you're just heaping more sorrows all the time on you but there's a fountain filled with blood drawn from the manual's vein and sinners plunged beneath the flood lose all their desire for the world for if you love the world or the things of the world the love of god is not even in you it's satisfying portion of god he has for each of you it's for whosoever will david he wrote one time in the psalms he said i believe the 47th psalm he said as the heart thirsts for the water brook so my soul thirsts after thee o god oh when i think of that david be, being a woodsman and i been through that part of the country you find out a lot of times there's a lot of deer that roam the heart is a deer and if you watch nature you'll see god and they'll have wild dogs in that country and they eat the deer they would come in packs and they overtake the deers and one of the things they do is cut the little what we call hamstring in the back the leaders and just cut out a whole pack then they can't run those dogs will eat as much as they can then the others can't pull away very much and then they are easier prey to run night right back and get them that's the way the devil does he will cut you off from prayer meetings he doesn't cut the hamstrings right then he'll pull around from this church to that and you'll run from the here to there but anytime the devil wants to gobble you up he's got you under his control when he cuts the prayer life brother you're gone that's right when he cuts that stuff of you and perverts it into the things of the world he's got you where he wants you he will let you gobble along here till you get to a certain place then crush your life out without god right there sure he will now the dogs the hounds of hell hound after the church certainly it does but look now really when some of the wild dogs eat jezebel did you ever know a dog won't eat human flesh they won't even lick the blood of a human being you can't get them near it no sir but this was a certain kind of dog it was a wild dog not a domestic dog but a wild dog wild dogs are wolves just like a wolf and they will eat human beings but if you notice these wild dogs had come in and eat just a bell it was a certain type of dog and that's the way it is today the devil's got a bunch of old weak dogs out they call them the wolf whistle and everything else to you young folks but remember it's a hound of hell right after you and make you think that you're popular the boys whistle at you because you're dressed uh, the way you are you poor little simple thing you don't know what you're doing that's right you don't know that you are a prey of the devil that the devil listen to his voice oh he might talk ever so well he might even be a pastor of the church but let me tell you it takes a real sheep herder to tell the difference between a wine of a goat and the wine of a lamb they both bleed just the same you can watch it if you are harder 
if you know your sheep you can hear his call but if you don't hear one of them you couldn't tell whether it's a goat or a lamb bleating the devil can bleat just like a lamb so that's exactly right but david he said as their heart thirsts for the water brook so my soul thirsts after thee o god and you see these little deers out on the desert as they're jumping along having a good time and the first thing you know a pack of wild dogs will run among them and they'll grab them now one of the favorite places for a wolf or a wild dog to grab a deer is just behind the fur of his ear that the big artery runs up there and runs down along the neck if the wolf can jump hang its fangs right in uh, then when the wolf throws his weight d- uh, down it's them two big blood veins in front cut the deer's neck and the little fellow struggles a couple of times and is gone covered all over with wolves and uh, he'll eat up just in a little another favorite place for the wild dogs or wolves to catch the deer is in the flank he'll grab him in the flank and when the wolf throws his weight to d- drop in the mid center like the little deer it throws him off his feet and then down he goes and he's got him and sometimes when the wild dog grabs the little deer and the little deer was quick enough to maneuver he could jump fast to one side and the dog lost his hold because he jerked uh, a whole chunk out of his little deer side then the blood will spray and the, if the wolf missed the blood vein here just got a little go the little deer maybe if he's quick and can maneuver he can get away from the dog and then here he comes after him crushing him with his blood and that little deer any hunter here knows that if you wound a deer and he can't get water you just might as well quit tracking him he can live as long as he can find water but when he can't find water he's finished and could you imagine as david standing there seeing that little deer and he cut by the wounds of a wild dog and he's searching for the water brook he must find the water or perish if he doesn't get to the water brook he's going to die the hounds of hell are right behind him he's either got to find the water brook or perish david said as a heart thirst for the water brook so my soul thirst after thee o god i have to have you or i'll die i can't go on i'm at the end of my road if i can't find you lord i'll die Blessed are they that hunger and thirst for the water brook, for they shall find it. Yes, there's a fountain filled with blood for every sinner drawn from Emmanuel's veins. You who thirst and long to be righteous, there's a fountain open today for you. The hounds of hell might have wounded you. They might have cut you this way or cut you that way. You might have been busted and drunk your blood and sent you to these places and pleasure crazy. If you really want to get over it, there's a water brook open today that's the love of god jesus christ his spirit flowing freely as the holy spirit whosoever will let him come and drink from the fountains of the water of life freely whosoever will yes black white brown yellow whatever you may be methodist baptist presbyterian church of god church of christ catholic pentecostal whoever you are young old middle age there is a fountain open and the waters of life is flowing freely and the holy spirit saying come all ye that labor and are heavy laden i'll give you rest blessed are you when you hunger and thirst for i will fill you and you shall be filled and as the heart thirsts for the water brook my soul thirsts after thee o god in conclusion i say this the trouble with the pentecostal church the methodist the baptist the presbyterian and all the rest it is their congregations if that congregation really thirsted for god it would send that little old preacher out of there and get them somebody in there that will preach them the gospel that's right you can't go to town today you merchants and you businessmen here in this convention and uh, you shoe men what if you put the old fashioned button shoe that the women used to wear you've got a shoe hook with it when you bought it what if you try to sell that shoe in chicago today you think you'd have any business no sir and if you've got five times the leather that these little old stilts that they built for women with a little peg like that and her toes sticking out and the heels sticking up charge them 25 to 35 dollars for about 40 cents worth of leather and they're silly enough to buy it but why is it why don't the merchant if he tells 
then the truth they don't want it that's exactly right the skirt that your mother used to wear that covered her all over and she probably paid three dollars or a dollar and a half for it and you go downtown and pay 35 dollars for a little a vulgar thing that the devil's poured you in to get out here and make you answer to adultery the day of judgment look out preacher you say i never did commit adultery i don't know about that the bible said whosoever looks upon a woman women to lust after her have committed adultery with her already in his heart and it don't matter how moral you live how clean you live how honorable you live to your husband if you dress yourself to make a man look at you like that as a day of judgment by the sinner that answers for adultery you'll be the one that committed it that's right now take that with you my dear friend think it over for a little while whosoever said jesus christ whosoever looketh upon a woman to lust after her has committed adultery with her already in his heart and before he could commit adultery the woman had to present herself in that way as she poured herself sexy looking out on the street no matter how clean she is morally she's adulterous in the god's book there's your hollywood there's your devil you might hate me for this but brother at the day of judgment you'll say i told you the truth that's exactly right now clean up straighten up teach others to do the same in your soul you'll go to fasting oh god i don't care about your fancies and your popularity i want christ or i'll die when the pentecostal church gets to that god will move on the scene and he never move on the scene until the people begin to thirst for him instead of the things of the world let us pray while we think over it are you guilty are you praying everybody also pray in your heart am i guilty of that examine your soul with god's book today what kind of a life have i been catering to oh lord oh my god thou art my god all in my youth will i seek thee my soul thirsts for thee my flesh oh my I don't want to be stripped off you don't want to uh, to do this you don't want to be filled with alcohol and stuff my flesh longeth for thee in a dry land where there is no water to see thy power what i want to see thy power lord thy glory thy power to heal the sick to magnify thy glory to shed over the people like a great fountain of all time religious meetings to see thee as i have seen thee in the sanctuary because the love and kindness is better to me than life little i my lips shall praise thee are you thirsty do you really want to be a christian a real christian if you really want to be an old time christian there's something in there that makes you want it do you want to go to heaven you remember the animal doesn't want to go to heaven that animal hasn't got no soul the animal don't know what life hereafter is but you know what life hereafter is you long for life hereafter the animal can't it has no soul but you are made with a soul and that soul was given to you to make a decision that heart that's within you it makes a decision and the animal can't make that decision cause it has not that in it to make but there's something in you that longs for god and you're trying to quench it maybe by staying home getting in the air conditioned room and looking at the television and staying home from prayer meeting and never reading the bible and going up to church on sunday morning and then maybe going back paying the pastor and waiting for an evangelist to come to the city and they might set back and say well that preacher is a pretty good fellow i'm telling you i kind of like him i kind of like the way he smiles i like the little jokes he pulls brother that's not life that's death that's death but do you really long for a room that you can go into and sit down under the old shade tree of the bible look up with tear stained eyes and say blessed savior that will guide me till i reach that healthful shore is there something in your heart that you long to love him and to praise him and to worship him all the things of the world to become dead in you death christ or die i must have christ or i must perish now i want every head bowed and every eye closed and everyone praying be honest be sincere if you really mean it and you who are raised your hand to god and say lord god from this day on please i know this thing that i do is not right but i want to love you 
I want what that preacher said today about you in the Bible. My thirst is after thee, like the heart thirsting for the water brook. And the thirst, Lord, that I have someday, I expect to be a great person. Oh, I do too, but after I cross the border yonder, I expect to be God's child. Do you really want to be that? If you do, would you just raise up your hand to him saying, God, it's me. I now raise up my hand saying, my soul is thirsting for thee, God. God bless you, lady. God bless you, young lady. And God bless you and you, someone else. God bless you. I don't. God bless you and you, lady. God bless you, sir. And you, lady, you might be church members that don't have nothing to do with it. You can be a church member and just as black as a harlot out here on the street. I know, you see, that's hard preaching, Brother Branham. If you come here at night time or come any other time and watch around the life and see the things that the Lord Jesus does, exactly in the word, surely I should have some conception of what Christ means. I know this one thing, brother. The devil has perverted life. He has perverted the church action. He's perverted it so much till he's perverted the people. And it's the hardest thing in the world to get the people to see the actual truth. It's right. Oh, they miss it by a thousand miles. Do you really long for him? If you do, would you raise your hand again? God bless you. Now just keep praying, you that's longing for him. I wonder if you could walk down here just a minute and let me pray with you just a minute. Would you just get up out of your seat quietly? I'm going. I ain't going to call. I'm going to let the Holy Spirit call. You just get out of your seat. God bless you, sir. God bless you, lady. Just get out of your seat and come down here. Let me pray with you. Stand right along the side of the altar. Here, if you will, while the organ is playing, I'm just not going to say no more. I'm just going to wait a moment. Let the Holy Spirit call. Come much down here and stand. There's a fountain open. You want to be an old-time Christian? Do you? Is your soul really thirsty after God? Would you rather dress decent? Be just a little hot, as you call it. Anybody knows when you take your clothes off, you get hotter, certainly. Go to a desert somewhere where you really have heat. Certainly you say, well, I'd like. That's right. That's good. People just coming up and coming down the aisles in this little group this afternoon. Many are gathering around the altar here. Come on up if you are really thirsting. Have you been beat by the devil? You really want to serve God? You want that thirst in you? You want to be sanctified? If you do, come on, it's the time. Or have you got to a place where you've been so seared and so hard and callous till nothing can touch you no more? Then you cross between this, between life and death. Now remember, if I be a servant of God, God will speak that I told the truth. There's people that actually believe that they're right and they're wrong. There's a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof is the ways of death. If you haven't been born again of the Spirit of God, and your whole desire is to love every day, every hour, every minute of the day, when you're awake and you're on, on the bed, you are praising Him, and your love is for Him, and the things of the world, all this modern stuff is all dead to you, you better take your place at the altar while we wait just a moment longer. Now there's a fountain, please, real slowly. While everybody's walking up, there's a fountain filled softly now, drawn from Emmanuel's veins and sinners planted beneath. You say, Brother Branham, I'm a Christian. If your soul condemns you, you come here and confess him. It's better to do it here than to do it when you're way, being weighed in God's balance. Lose all the guilty. God bless you, sailor boy. Come on, lose all the guilty. Just be praying, the Holy Spirit speaking. That little heart in you is moving. Sinners plunged beneath that flood. Tonight, say, Brother Preacher, I've longed for something. I don't know what it is. There's only one thing that longing was put in you for. That's right here. Here's where you long to be. The devil's trying to get you not to see it. But I'm praying in my heart. As I'm standing here, God open the eyes of the understanding. I love you. As Brother Joseph Bose said to me many times, Brother Branham, Chicago loves you. And I love Chicago. But listen, a real daddy will be honest with his children. If he has to whip them sometime, he's a real daddy. Yes, sir, a real dad will correct his children. And friends, I want to tell you, don't you never try to get to heaven outside of that deep longing and love of God in your heart. 
if you haven't come acquainted with that great fountain that I spoke of at the beginning where God gushes forth, now he perverts that, you see, as it comes forth. Satan perverts it. Say, oh, well, this and this and this. Be careful. It's got to be genuine. Did you hear that little song like this, sister? Just continue on your song. It's all right. Brother, apart from the Savior today, risking your soul on the things that decay, oh, what if today God recalled it away? Then what would you give in exchange for your soul? Listen now close. Every one of you that's not around the altar, such now. Then when you stand at night, at the bar, by and by, and when you're weighed in God's balance on high, if you should be sentenced ever to die, then what would you give in exchange for your soul? Think of it. And that weighing may be in the next half hour for every person in here. Do you know this is not your last opportunity? And don't come lest you really mean it. But if there is the least bit of thirst in your heart, as the heart thirsts for the water brook, so my soul thirsts after thee, O God. O Lord, I've got to have you or die. You see what's gathering around the altar. Here this afternoon, probably Methodist, Baptist, Presbyterian, Lutheran, Pentecostal, some, no church at all, but there's a firm thirst there. They are longing. I'm going to wait just a moment longer, God. Just a few minutes longer, just been one hour. I promise to be an hour, just a little minute longer. I want to say something to you now. You want to come on, come right ahead. You've been in these meetings, now get all the skeptic feeling away from you. I want you here at the altar now, not to depend on any emotion at all, no emotion. I want you to look at just exactly what God said. Now listen, I know the Lutheran said, the just shall live by faith, all right. There's a many of them started out, but they were unjust. Methodist said, Brother, when you shout, you've got it. Many of them shouted, they didn't have it. The Pentecostal said, When you speak with tongues, you've got it. Thousands spoke in tongues, they never haven't got it. Their life proves they haven't got it. These are said by their fruits, you shall know them. What is the fruits of what? The church? A real sweet feeling in your heart, knowing that you're passed from death unto life, and you're at peace with God, a real tender heart that feeds on the things of God, than to have all the. Now remember, I believe in shouting, I believe in speaking with tongues. Tongues, I believe in everything God said. I believe in every miracle, every sign. But I would rather have this man, all the rest of it put together, wouldn't you? Rather have it. I'd rather have that real sweet, mellow Holy Spirit moving into my life and making all the world pass away than to have all the noise. And now I believe in shouting, sure. I shout and scream myself. That's right. I believe in every gift. I wouldn't be here preaching healing. I believe in all those things. But brother... That isn't it yet. That's not it. These gifts and signs, that's not it. It's Christ in the heart. That's it. When you'll stay, that's why. God bless you now. Cards will be given at out 6 o'clock. And now, the Lord bless you. I'm going to turn the service to the pastor while I go to pray to make ready for the healing service tonight. God be with you till we meet.